Hello everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me today to speak on recipe for success, professionalism and image. These are topics that we have we are very familiar with and sometimes we may have challenges in figuring out how professionalism relates to me. And I hope that I'm able to share with you and embark some, impart some knowledge and also just meet your professional and personal needs on the issues. We'll speak a little bit about image as well. Sometimes that's a challenging one, but I'll ask you to try to be objective when you think about image and when we talk about how image affects professionalism. Is that all right? Excellent. And feel free to raise your hand anytime and ask a question or make a comment because I'm here to impart knowledge and to share in my civic duty as a professional resume writer and career coach. I'm here to spread the message of goodwill and empower motivated job seekers and career changers. So please, by all means, feel free to jump in. Okay. okay. Excellent. Okay. Thank you so much. I want to start off by asking um, you to, I know you're eating, so I want you to take a second, and I need both of your hands, and I want you to use your left hand for your no's, and your right hand for your yeses, and I want you to keep up, I'm going to ask you eight questions, and if it's a yes, put one, and just keep up with your yeses and your no's, okay? In the last year, were you highlighted in the company newsletter? If you're a student, were you highlighted in the company, in the school paper, or if you live in the dormitory, were you highlighted in the dormitory newsletter? So that's a yes or no. Number okay, two. What was the hands again? The left is for no and your right is for yes. Okay. Are people aware of your talents outside of your organization? Once again, if you're a student, um, is, the, is the student life center aware of your talents? Is your department, if you have a part-time job on campus, are they aware of your talents? Okay. Number three. Do more than half of your company know you well enough to recognize you by name? If you're a student, does the president of the university know your name? Does the director of student life and leadership know your name? Does the cafeteria manager know your name? You, this is one question, so don't pop up. This is one, one answer per question, okay? Number four, have you, have one or more persons ask you to be their mentor? If you're a student, have you talked with freshmen if you're a senior? Have you talked with juniors if you're a senior? Okay. Number five, does your boss know the activities in which you participate outside of your organization? So is, does your boss know that you're a member of Civitan? Okay. <coughs> number six, do you belong to a number of professional or community organizations? And these are especially for people who are students as well as for people who are working. Are you a member of a professional association? Do you know the professional association that aligns itself with your career field? Okay. Have you been asked to speak at a conference or a staff meeting? If you're in school, have you been asked to speak at any of the student associations on campus? If you work, does your company have a Toastmasters organization or a civic, do they do United Way type of activities? Have you participated in those activities? Okay. Number eight, are you perceived in a fashionable light within your organization? And if you don't, if you can't say for sure yes, the answer is no. Okay, so raise your hand if you answered, if six of your answers were yes, raise your hand. Excellent, I have one, two, three, excellent. That is excellent. If you receive six, that means people do see you. If your answers, your no's were six or more, that means you need to increase your visibility. And the th three things I want to share with you about professionals and professionalism is that professionals are professional because of the way they behave. That means how you carry yourself at work. That means how you're perceived in your community, in your civic and church organizations, as well as just um, as, at school if you have children, how you're perceived. And there are three points that I want to share with you about being a professional, and it, this directly relates to the recipe for success. Number one, being a profession, professional in your field means that your behavior is perceived that way. The way you speak, the way you object, the way you join, lend your support at work and at school, all of those things are consistent with being a, behaving the way, in ways that are acceptable. 
if you're a hot head, if you go off, or if you withdraw, or if you're quick to just agree to get along, those are not necessarily good ways to behave as a professional. You're judged by your opinions, your conduct, and your values, which include your attire. You may want to keep in mind that you're being judged by your colleagues for your ability to take the skill sets that you have now and transfer them. Everyone in this room knows you as a Civitan member. They're looking and they're gonna eventually, if you fit the bill of a professional, they're gonna ask you, could you come to my job and speak during our lunch break on XYZ topic? We're having a special XYZ event. Or at the schoolhouse, we're having A, B, C, D, E, F, G event. And I'd love for you to come and share your experiences in your career field if you're retired. If you're not getting those type of invitations or responses, there may be something wrong with your perceived level of professionalism. And it also speaks to being promotable. Sometimes you wonder why you're, you're not promotable. Most of the time, you're, people say things like, I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm just right out of college. I'm black, I'm a woman, I'm Hispanic, I'm Native American, or I'm a white male. Being a white male is out now. Those answers are incorrect. Your skill sets, your level of professionalism has to be such that you're so perfect in you, the ways that you behave at that point, then you begin to be discriminated against. You're not discriminated against just because of X, Y, Z. You're discriminated against based on your talent just being wonderful. Now we can discriminate against you. Otherwise, you don't qualify. Does that make sense? And people never think about that because we love to not take personal responsibility. But the good part about being a professional is that you get to choose what type of profession, professional you will become. Does that make sense? Excellent. Number two point, a professional who displays motivation in their work and in their extracurricular interest is viewed as easy to work with and one who will have a positive influence to the team or in the city. We are the fastest growing city in the state of Tennessee. So therefore, everything is happening in Clarksville. Your company wants you to represent them at Rivers or Spires or go down to the, um, the Midnight Madness show that happens at Austin P every year. Your company wants you to come on post and represent and salute the soldiers because of who you are. If you can have a good attitude in Civitan and you can have a great attitude on campus in class, your teachers will ask you, can you join us this Saturday and bring your kids because we're going to salute the soldiers. Can you come down to Rivers and Spires and work a booth and tell people about your experience as a non-traditional student. Can you come down and volunteer at the Easter egg hunt coming up at the park, midnight after dark? Those type of events, those are the things that professionals do. And if you're not being asked, you may want to challenge yourself and look objectively at how you're behaving. Does that make sense? Excellent, excellent. And the third point I'd like to bring up is that, well, point, side point is attitude, and we all know that's self-explanatory. But my last point is that professionals have emotional maturity. It takes patience, tolerance, and an ability to assert your own personality without overpowering everyone else's, and that's called emotional intelligence. When you get upset, do you just go off and everybody says, well, you know he or she just goes off after a while. That's immaturity and you will not excel no matter how many degrees you get, no matter how far you went in the military. Because you went in the military, you use that as, a, as an excuse to act up, act out, go off. Those things are unprofessional. And companies can't depend on you to represent them well or to solve their problems when you behave that way. There's nothing wrong with making a mistake, though. We all tend to make those mistakes, but the beauty is that you learn to correct those mistakes through professional development. Does that make sense? And things like this that you're doing as part of Civitan, you're doing those things. You're interacting and you're learning how to behave, how to get along with the team, and how to lead. Those of you who take the lead and who uh, take on projects such as the community service work that you're doing with the Teddy Bear Project and the Goodwill Policing Station, those types of things build character. It shows that you do have the ability to be positive and contribute positively to the community. So those are good things. Okay, we're going to take just a 30 second break, just a 30 second break, okay?